day, grade eights, and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. I am Anita Clayton, and I will be guiding you through this series of lessons on life and living. This will be your second lesson in a series of five lessons on life and living for Grade 8 Natural Science Term 1. In today's lesson, we will look at the process of cellular respiration. Pay close attention because we will again talk about glucose, carbon dioxide and water. But this time they play a completely different role in this process of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process whereby cells convert oxygen and glucose into energy, carbon dioxide and water. This process is crucial because it provides the energy that cells need to perform various functions like metabolic reactions. First, we need to identify the site where cellular respiration takes place. This reaction takes place in a specialized organelle known as the mitochondrion. Remember, photosynthesis takes place in an organelle called the chloroplast. They are both oval shaped and should not be confused with each other. Mitochondria are often referred to the powerhouses of the cell. Just like ESCOM is responsible for providing us with electricity, the mitochondria is responsible for providing the energy that cells need to perform their functions. Let's take a look at the word equation for cellular respiration. For this reaction to take place, we need glucose and oxygen. And after this reaction takes place, we produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. So in this equation, glucose and oxygen are the reactants in this equation. Whereas carbon dioxide, energy in the form of ATP and water will be our products during the cellular respiration process. Just as we have a starch test to prove that photosynthesis has taken place, we also have a test to prove that carbon dioxide is released during the process of cellular respiration. I will now hand over to my colleague who will do a practical demonstration to show how we can test to see if carbon dioxide has been released in order to prove that cellular respiration has taken place. Welcome back to the lab. Now that you've learned more about uh, the process of cellular respiration, we're going to look at two very easy tests to test for the gas of oxygen and also for the gas of carbon dioxide. So in our first test, we'll be testing for oxygen uh, and all that we need is a small piece of wood. Um, we're going to light it and let it burn for a small while and then we're going to blow it out so that's just a very small flame and then when it comes into contact uh, with oxygen it's actually going to light up again. So let's start off by lighting our wooden splint. Okay and I'm just going to keep that here on the side. Then I have some uh, different chemicals here that we're just lighting and they are going to form a reaction where um, oxygen gas is formed. And so we're going to test that it is actually oxygen gas that is formed by placing the glowing splint into the test tube. And if it takes flame, um, then we know that it is oxygen that has been produced. If it does not take flame, then no oxygen has been produced. So we just have to light it up. Got our glowing splint over here. And as you can see, uh, it has uh, lit up when it's exposed uh, to oxygen. Okay, so um, oxygen is being produced. We've tested for, our, for it our glowing splint um, flame took light. As you can see here, it takes light as I place it into the oxygen that is being uh, produced. And so that's the test for oxygen. Mm -hmm. 
now we will be doing a test for carbon dioxide gas. So what we need uh, is some lime water and I'm going to uh, blow through the straw into the lime water because when lime water comes into contact with carbon dioxide, it changes from a very clear see-through uh, to a milky color. And this is because the carbon dioxide will react with the calcium hydroxide um, and form what we call calcium carbonate, which is a solid. And so it will change uh, the lime water from see-through to a milky uh, color if there is carbon dioxide being um, uh, reacting with it. And so we can clearly see here um, that the lime water has turned from see-through, so very clear, to a milky color. And that shows us that carbon dioxide was the gas uh, that was blown into it. So those were two very simple tests for oxygen and for carbon dioxide. I hope you enjoyed the experiments and I hope to see you soon again. At a glance, it may look like the two reactions, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, are reverse reactions, but in actual fact, they are not. They are, however, interlinked as the products produced in the one reaction can act as reactants in the other reaction. So, if photosynthesis takes place and glucose and oxygen are produced, the glucose and oxygen can be used during cellular respiration to produce ATP and the byproducts water and carbon dioxide will be produced. The water and carbon dioxide can again be used during the reaction of photosynthesis. ATP is the molecule responsible for carrying the energy to the different parts of the cell. We don't have cables connecting us to the powerhouse. So, the ATP is used as a taxi to transport the energy to the different parts of the cells where it is needed. So, here's why cellular respiration is important. One, energy production. Cellular respiration produces ATP, which is the main energy currency of the cell and powers all cellular activities. And two, water production. Water is another byproduct which can be used in other cellular processes. By understanding cellular respiration, we can appreciate how cells obtain energy to perform the necessary function. This is a process needed for all living to take place. In our next lesson, we will delve into the wonderful world of ecology. Don't forget, to complete the self-marking exercise at the end of the lesson and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting educational content.